Today, Auto Flight System Part 3, and I will continue with the flight mode denunciator. In Part 2, we've got a general overview of the flight mode denunciator and discuss the different thrust modes and auto flight system messages displayed on the first column of the FMA. Okay, for an off crossing, turn right. Foxtrot Delta Delta one, Zero, one, wind 270 one, degrees, one, one, six one, knots, runway one, zero, two, two, cleared for takeoff. Okay, one, three, six, zero, degrees, et cetera, runway three, seven, right. Hello, I'm happy that you're here again today. Our objective, the FMA, and we will continue with the vertical modes populated in the second column of the FMA. We see here a quick summary of the most important active vertical modes, SRS, Open Climb, Climb, Altitude Star, Altitude, Altitude Constraint Star, Altitude Constraint, Altitude Cruise, Open Descent and Descent. A quick reminder, active modes are always displayed in green color. Let's go step by step. Our first vertical mode we want to talk about is SRS. By the way, you see on my presentation besides SRS mode in the second column, other modes, i.e. thrust modes displayed as well. I did this not to confuse you, but help you to understand that certain modes are related to other modes, like SRS. SRS means the speed reference system is engaged, a mode which is available as SRS takeoff and SRS go round depending on the flight phase. The FMA displays, however, only the abbreviation SRS in green. SRS is a managed vertical mode. To engage SRS takeoff, certain requirements must be met. The aircraft has to be on the ground for a minimum time of 30 seconds. V2 has been inserted on the takeoff panel of the FMS performance page. Quick reminder, V2 is the takeoff safety speed. The slats are extended and the flight crew sets all thrust levers to either TOGA or FLEX MCT in case FLEX has been previously selected on the takeoff panel of the IFMS performance page. Now let's look at the differences to SRS go around. Even if the FMA looks the same in terms of the green SRS indication, some requirements are different. To engage SRS go around, the aircraft has to be airborne, always less than 30 seconds on the ground. For the A380, at least two thrust levers. For the A350, one thrust lever has to be set to TOGA to initialize the go-around process. And the slats flaps configuration, and I'm talking about either the actual slats flaps position or the flaps lever position, has to be different from fully retracted and the flaps lever position is not at zero. In case of a go-round initialization and engaging SRS go-round, the speed of the aircraft is controlled by the elevators in order to fly the aircraft along a positive vertical path. Additionally, the guidance law introduces a flight path angle protection guaranteeing a positive climb and a pitch angle protection limits the aircraft nose up position to a maximum of 22.5 degrees. The speed target will be the speed at go around engagement and is memorized for the reminder of the SRS phase. The lower limit of the target speed is the approach that the PRIMS have memorized at 700 feet rate altimeter height. Open climb is a vertical thrust mode, so thrust is not controlling the speed, but providing stable climb thrust. Open climb will engage under the following conditions. On the AFSCP, an altitude is selected, which is above the aircraft altitude and the pilot flying pulls the altitude selector lock, but land mode must not be engaged. In case SRS go around is presently engaged, the aircraft needs to be above 100 feet radar altimeter height. And last but not least, the aircraft has to be minimum time of five seconds airborne. Open climb will engage as well when presently in SRS and the aircraft reaches the acceleration altitude with open climb arm before. 
and Open Climb will engage if presently in SRS and the pilot flying pulls the speed Mach knob. However, the selected altitude in the altitude selector window on the AFSCP must be above the aircraft altitude. In the case of SRS go around, the aircraft must be above a radar altimeter height of 100 feet. And finally, the aircraft must be airborne for a minimum time of five seconds. By the way, whenever open climbing gauges, altitude will be armed automatically as displayed by the blue alt in the second row. I will talk about the armed modes in the next video. Open climb and climb modes are always associated with an altitude mode, which makes sense, I would say. The moment we decide to climb, we need to have a target altitude selected to climb. I guess the moon would be too far away. Now climb mode is engaged and a contrast to open climb, climb is a managed vertical mode as we climb to a specific altitude managed by the FMS. Alt is armed as we can see in the second row. Let's have a look at the engagement requirements, uh, engagement requirements. The lateral managed mode NAV has to be engaged as we can see on the FMA in the third column. As the aircraft is flying managed, i.e. it is following the FMS guidance, neither the descent nor the approach phase must be activated. The vertical flight plan has to be valid, which means no flight plan discontinuity is immediately ahead in the flight plan. And similar to restrictions we've seen in other modes, the aircraft has to be airborne this time for a minimum of five seconds. One of the following conditions will engage climb. The altitude selected on the AFSCP is above the present aircraft altitude and the pilot flying pushes the altitude selector knob on the AFSCP or in case SRS is engaged with climb armed, the aircraft reaches the acceleration altitude or in case of a climate eruption due to a present altitude constraint and climb is armed, the moment the constraint has been passed, climb will engage again. Our next mode, altitude star. Alt star is the altitude acquire mode for the upcoming altitude selected on the AFSCP. It engages once the aircraft reaches the Sonim capture zone, which is within 250 feet of the selected target altitude. As you see as well, the thrust mode in column one has changed to speed as the speed is now controlled by the auto thrust system. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> when you maintain an altitude, you find it difficult to control the speed with the pitch angle. Once the aircraft has leveled off at the target altitude selected on the AFSCP, alt star engages and uh, disengages and alt engages. Here we see a minor change on the FMA instead of ALT, we read ALT Cruise. Why? ALT Cruise is the cruising altitude programmed in the FMS. As long as the aircraft is flying any lower altitude selected on the AFSCP as programmed in the FMS, the FMA displays ALT. The moment the AFSCP selected altitude and FMS cruising altitude are the same, the FMA reads Alt Cruise. Altitude constraint star, again in acquire mode, in this case of an altitude constraint. Now, Alt constraint star is engaged and captures the upcoming altitude constraint. With Alt constraint displayed, the altitude hold mode is engaged and holds the constraint altitude. Let's have a quick look at the engagement conditions. The first option, all constraint engages if all constraint star is engaged and as soon as the pilot flying is pressing the altitude push button on the AFSCP or the second option would be pushing the altitude selector knob on the AFSCP, but that will be valid only if altitude is engaged the aircraft altitude corresponds to the constraint altitude. The altitude set in the altitude selector window on the AFSCP is higher than the present aircraft altitude. 
NAV is engaged, the FMS flight phase is neither in descent nor in approach, and the vertical flight path is valid. The third option would be pushing the altitude selector knob on the AFSCP, but again only if altitude is engaged. The aircraft altitude corresponds to the constraint altitude. This time the altitude set in the altitude selector window on the AFSCP is lower than the aircraft altitude. NAV or LOCK STAR or LOCK is engaged and the FMS flight phase is not in takeoff or climb or go around phase. Our next engaged vertical mode open descent is a selected mode. The pilot flying initializes this mode by pulling the altitude selector knob on the AFSCP with a lower target altitude selected. Engine thrust will reduce to idle as there is no managed vertical profile available. In difference here, the descent mode. Now the lateral mode is NAV, that means the vertical descent profile is managed by the FMS. Thrust will be in thrust descent, but could be in thrust idle as well. In descent mode, the aircraft plans to follow the computed vertical descent profile, which is based on atmospheric forecasts. In the ideal situation, it would be a descent in thrust descent, always with a certain amount of power. Should the actual atmospheric conditions be different, i.e. more tailwind, then thrust idle will be chosen by the prims to compensate for getting high on profile. Let's take a look at a few more mode options for the vertical navigation. The presentation gives us a summary. We read vertical speed, the blue axis stay for selectable climb or descent values in feet. Then we have flight path angle with the selectable degree value, glide slope star, glide slope, flight management system, glide slope and TCAS. Let's see. With vertical speed and a selected negative or positive value set on the AFSCP, the mode will engage by pulling the vertical speed knob on the AFSCP. In our case, the aircraft would descend with a vertical rate of 500 feet per minute. When flight pass angle mode is selected, a climb or descent angle can be selected and is displayed on the FMA. In my example, a descent angle of three degrees. Now we come to the vertical guidance modes depending on a valid glide slope beam. Glide slope star is engaged, again a capture mode, in this case to intercept a received glide slope signal. In order to engage a GS star, GS was armed before and lock star or lock is engaged. In our example, lock is engaged already. The capture zone of the glide slope is reached when the glide slope deviation is less than two dot on the eyeless glide slope scale. GS is our next vertical mode. There are also a few conditions which need to be accomplished before GS star disengages and GS will engage. The glide slope engages when lock or GS star are engaged and the aircraft becomes established on the glide slope beam. That requires that GS star has been engaged for more than 15 seconds and the glide slope deviation becomes less than 0.3 dot on the eyeless glide slope scale. Now we come to a vertical mode guided by the flight management system. FS Glide Slope Star or abbreviated FGS Star is the capture mode of the FMS vertical descent pass for approach. To be able to fly an FMS approach, at least one FMS must be operative and at least one MMR is able to compute the FMS vertical guidance named FMS Glide Slope and the FMS lateral guidance named FMS Localizer. A few requirements have to be fulfilled. FGS star will engage as soon as the aircraft reaches the capture zone of the FGS beam and FGS has been armed and lock star or lock or F-lock star or F-lock is engaged 
And once FGS is engaged, the Airbus tracks the FMS glide slope. However, before FGS will engage, FGS star must be engaged and the Airbus becomes established on the FGS pass. To become established, FGS star must have been engaged for more than 15 seconds and the pass deviation reduces to less than 0.3 dot. The next mode I like to talk about is TCAS. We see now that TCAS mode is active by the green color and displayed in the first row of the vertical modes. TCAS stays for Traffic Collision Avoidance System, a system which detects and displays surrounding aircraft that have a transponder. The system calculates possible collision threats and gives adequate information to the flight crew. Those threats are divided into four levels from low to high urgency. Other intruders, proximate intruders, traffic advisories, and the most urgent, the resolution advisories. In case of a resolution advisory, the system activates TCAS green and might trigger preventive or corrective maneuvering demands, which have to be followed by changing the vertical flight path of the aircraft. In order for the APFD TCAS to be able to engage, four conditions must be met. TCA system 1 or 2 must be functional. TCAS must be in TARA mode, i.e. the TA only push button is not selected. Minimum one autopilot or one flight director is available for guidance commands. And finally, the APFD TCAS mode itself did not fail, which would be indicated on the ECAM with an Ember TCAS mode fault message. As I just said, the APFD TCAS mode will engage immediately the second a resolution advisor is triggered. Regardless of the engagement status of the autopilots and flight directors, in case the flight directors would not have been engaged or track FBA has been selected, the flight directors will engage in heading vertical speed with flight director bars and replace the track FBA symbology. As soon as the oral alert clear of conflict sounds, the APFD TCAS mode will disengage automatically as the urgent traffic conflict is cleared. That shall be enough for today. In the next video, I will continue with the vertical armed modes and afterwards we start right away with the lateral modes. Thank you for joining me today. In case you have any questions or comments, please write me. I wish you a great day.